Let's go ahead and talk about the inverse cotangent function now. So this is actually going to be very similar to the inverse tangent function. So what we're going to do is start with the graph of the cotangent function, and we see that this graph fails the horizontal line test pretty badly. Okay, any horizontal line that we draw is going to hit this graph in infinitely many points. So that's bad, that means this graph fails the horizontal line test. But what we can do is restrict the domain of the cotangent function so that we only consider values between x equals 0 and x equals pi. Uh, where, by the way, at x equals 0, we have a vertical asymptote, and at x equals pi, we also have another vertical asymptote. But we'll talk about the vertical asymptotes uh, later on, uh, shortly. But anyway, let's continue with this. So uh, this here, if we look at this restricted cotangent function, um, we see that the graph of this does pass the horizontal line test, and that's good. So any horizontal line that we draw anywhere is going to hit this graph once, and only once, and that's good. That means this graph passes the horizontal line test. So then what we can do is uh, use this to get a graph of the inverse. Okay. So remember, if you want a graph of the inverse function, you take the graph of the function and reflect it over the line y equals x. So if we reflect this over the line y equals x, we're going to get this graph here. Okay. So um, let's take a look at this graph by itself, and then what we have is this. Okay. Now, just like with the inverse tangent function, uh, there are some asymptotes here that we've been ignoring. So let's go back up a little bit, uh, not quite that far. Um, but here we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and at x equals pi. So if we take those vertical asymptotes and reflect them over the line y equals x, um, then in general when you take a vertical line and reflect it over y equals x, you get a horizontal line. So uh, the vertical asymptote x equals 0, when we reflect over y equals x, that becomes y equals 0, the horizontal asymptote. And when we take uh, this vertical asymptote x equals pi and reflect over the line y equals x, that's going to give us the horizontal asymptote y equals pi. Okay, so here's the graph of the inverse cotangent function just by itself, and then here's the graph of inverse cotangent with its horizontal asymptotes. So uh, horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and another one at y equals pi. And also, uh, just like with the inverse tangent function, this graph, uh, the, uh, the graph of the inverse cotangent function, goes infinitely far to the right and infinitely far to the left. Okay. Um, so that's the graph of the inverse cotangent function. Uh, let's talk about some of the properties and see how it relates to the cotangent function. Okay, so the domain, like we just saw in the graph, because remember the graph uh, goes infinitely far to the left and to the right, so the domain is all real numbers. Okay, it just never stops. It just keeps going uh, all the way out to the left and all the way out to the right, and when it goes infinitely far to the left, uh, it gets closer and closer to y equals pi, but never actually touches it, and when it goes out uh, infinitely far to the right, um, the graph gets closer and closer to y equals zero, but never actually touches it. Okay, but still, um, the domain is all real numbers, and the range uh, we also see from the graph is 0 to pi. So uh, 0 and pi, since we have horizontal asymptotes there, y equals 0 and y equals pi, uh, they are not part of the range. Okay, uh, the cotangent function, or sorry, the inverse cotangent function never actually gets those values. Okay, the inverse cotangent function never gets those values 0 and pi, so that's why it's uh, rounded parentheses, not square brackets. Uh, the range does not include these values, 0 and pi. But uh, the range is everything in between. Okay, so that's the domain and range. Uh, just some notation real quick. Uh, the inverse cotangent function is denoted like this, cotangent inverse of x, um, or we can say arc cot of x, or arc cot, I guess, I don't know. Um, or for short, y equals a cot of x. Okay? And this, again, this a cot thing, it's not really as common as it used to be, but you could use it, it's fine, it's totally correct. People will uh, probably know what you mean. Um, I guess it just depends on where you are. But anyway, three different ways of saying exactly the same thing. They're all, uh, they all just mean the inverse cotangent function, uh, the inverse cotangent of x. Okay. Some cancellation properties. Uh, inverse cotangent of the cotangent of x equals x if x is between, strictly between, if x is strictly between 0 and pi. Okay. So you might be wondering what if x is not between 0 and pi. Well then, as long as there are no domain violations, then there's something else that you can do, which we'll talk about uh, in a separate video later on. Anyway, that's what's going on there. We have this nice cancellation property provided x is between 0 and pi. Okay. And uh, cotangent of the inverse cotangent of x equals x for all real x. So just like with the inverse tangent function, we have this nice cancellation property here that's actually true for all real values of x. Um, and again, the reason for that is because of the domain of the inverse cotangent function is all real numbers. So we have this nice cancellation property for all real x. So that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, no restrictions to worry about there. Um, so that's pretty much it for inverse cotangent. Just some quick notes about the notation. Uh, so remember, we have these three different ways of saying it here. 
um, cotangent inverse of x, arc cot of x, or a cot of x, or arc cot, a cot, whatever. Um, so here, this negative one in the exponent, we want to be very careful because uh, just like with the other uh, inverse trig functions we talked about so far, um, it does not mean what it usually means for algebraic expressions. Uh, cotangent inverse of x is not the same thing as 1 over cotangent of x. Okay? 1 over cotangent of x is actually tangent of x, and tangent of x is not the same thing as the inverse cotangent. And okay? So this notation, uh, a little bit unfortunate, I guess, but it just comes from the fact that if you have a function f of x, the inverse is denoted uh, f inverse of x like this. So negative 1 in the exponents up there, that superscript, negative 1, uh, negative 1 in the exponent here, uh, inverse cotangent of x. Okay. So that's it for the inverse cotangent function. Uh, more inverse trig coming up in the next few videos.